Hello to you all. I'd love to share a story with you to start. One day, a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, young man, what are you doing? The boy replied, throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back, they'll die. The man laughed to himself and said, do you realise there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make any difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it into the surf. Then, smiling at the man, he said, I made a difference to that one. I believe this story captures the essence of creating change. All around the world, we hear voices of doubt telling us global warming is happening too fast for your actions to be of any worth. Or there are too many people around the world who just don't care about the environment. Why should your efforts matter? Or for me personally, there are over 900 students at New York High School. It's a lost cause trying to implement change in a place where students just don't care. When I first joined the Youth Environment Council of South Australia, the YEC, run by the lovely Adelaide and Mount Lofty Rangers National Resources Management staff, of which some are here today, I believed those voices of doubt. I believed those doubts and let them evolve into my thinking. I felt like I was the only one in my school who cared about our impact on the environment. This was demonstrated by one incident in particular. I remember walking out of a classroom in Year 9, the year in which I joined the YAC, having just viewed our war as an inconvenient truth for the first time. Oh, there we go. Um, something stirred within me as he talked of human impact on our planet and the drastic effects we're having. I felt an intense motivation to do something about that until a fellow classmate remarked, well that was the most boring movie I've ever had to watch in my entire life. Why did we waste a lesson on that? Her comment quickly brought my inspired thoughts back to the ground. Despite feeling buoyed by the positive environment within the YAC, I felt truly alone and despondent in my school, the one place I believed I could make change. By being involved in the YAC, I met many young people who, like me, cared about the environment. These people, now my friends, motivated me to do something. Starting out, however, was not easy. Perhaps it was my pride that propelled me to start implementing initiatives alone. Or perhaps it was that overwhelming feeling that no one shared my passion. On my own, I came up with the idea of creating a kitchen garden at New York for High School. My vision was to supply our home ec faculty and school canteen with fresh fruit and veggies grown on site to slowly help our school become more self-sustainable in that aspect as well as involving students. In hindsight, yes, it was a wonderful idea to help our school become more self-sufficient, but I've learned that a good idea combined with a team of one does not necessarily correlate with good implementation and effectiveness. However, a good idea combined with a team united in the one purpose does correlate with good implementation and effectiveness. If I could give advice to my 14-year-old self struggling to kickstart a kitchen garden, I would say just that. I've realised that rather than the first stage is being planned for a project, the first stage is need to be planning for a team. We need to invest in people, for it is only then that change will blossom. Not only do we need to invest in like-minded people, however, we need to invest in those who are sceptical too. I find the little boy in the starfish story encompasses this when it stated he listened politely when the old man questioned him. The boy then replies with a smile and responds with grace. I believe the boy's actions in the face of doubt were more likely to inspire the older man rather than turn him away. As I've grown older and progressed through my environmental journey, I've come to understand that before implementation, Environmental initiatives need proper planning that adheres to the parameters of the school environment. Looking chronologically at my journey, after the failure of the kitchen garden due to lack of teamwork, I began to investigate other areas in which New York High School could lessen our environmental impact. I remember an idea came at one of our YSE camps in which I joined a discussion group surrounding recycling in schools. 
The session was a turning point, helping me realise my school had absolutely zero recycling options for students, apart from 10 cent recycling in select classrooms. Our outdoor bins were only for rubbish, meaning that everything went to landfill. After learning about how landfills contribute to global warming and other such statistics during our YAC session, I decided our school needed to take action. By this time, I had joined my school's Student Representative Council, the SRC, and was a part of a sustainability committee with fellow students. We excitedly talked about our plans to implement two new bins into the school grounds, yellow top bins for general recyclables and red bins for 10 cent recycling. I was revelling in the fact that I was finally surrounded by a support group, not only within the YUC, but within the SRC as well. However, I was yet to realise the importance of planning. I had misinterpreted the age-old saying, step by step, we were planning on the fly, rather than planning towards the end goal and then implementing the smaller steps. We acted on our excitement straight away, deciding on the colour schemes and ordering the new bins as an SRC without first considering important elements like who would empty our recycling bins and how to place them in permanent sites around the school. I remember standing with the SRC celebrating the arrival of our new bins and then the nausea that replaced excitement when a teacher brought up the fact that we hadn't organised a recycling contractor and all recyclables placed in the general recycling bins would go to landfill anyway. We hadn't addressed the important parameters enforced by school environment. Perhaps we naively thought the rubbish truck would come and pick up our recyclables like it did at home. It was in this feeling of immense despondency that I truly understood the importance of pre-planning, no matter how impatient and excited you are for the end result. This is a lesson I'm sure the members of the SRC Sustainability Committee will not forget either. Two and a half years on from beginning our bin project, we still haven't finalised a recycling contract. We still haven't worked out this permanent positioning for bins, and we still haven't got students putting the right things in the right bins 100% of the time. But what we have done is looked at the bigger picture. We're realising that change does not happen immediately in a school, that we sometimes need to suppress the feeling of urgency so that we implement small changes that have longevity. We're changing a culture, not simply implementing new bins without explanation. Just as a little boy threw the starfish back into the ocean one by one, we're changing a culture, one student at a time. When we first started our bin project, we were addressing the symptoms caused by a school that was ignorant of environmental issues. In present day, we're aiming to address the cause by educating the school body about our precious environment to inspire the intrinsic motivation so needed for culture change to be permanent. Along with other things, we participated in National Enviro Week through daily environmental videos shown in each home group with a trivia question to accompany them. And I've got students involved with a bin audit with Wipeout Waste to see firsthand our contribution to landfill. There's a quote I love that states, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, but give a man a fishing rod and you feed him for a lifetime. I personally relate this quote to environmental change that by educating people about the environment and inspiring motivation within them, they're likely to transform that motivation into acts that truly make a difference. Our project at Newry High isn't just about getting students to put the right rubbish in the right bin. It's about helping them to understand the meaning behind it and apply that knowledge to all aspects of their life. Environmental initiatives need the right support network, as well as proper planning around respective parameters. They also need to tap into people's motivation and involve everyone. I'd like to end with a quote that I feel sums up my thoughts. Beth Clark so wisely states, people who really want to make a difference in the world usually do it in one way or another. And I've noticed something about people who make a difference in the world. They hold the unshakable conviction that individuals are extremely important, that every life matters. They get excited over one smile. They're willing to feed one stomach, educate one mind, and treat one wound. They aren't determined to revolutionise the world all at once. They're satisfied with small changes. Over time, though, the small changes add up. Sometimes they even transform cities and nations, and yes, 
the world, and hope. We are those people. Our actions, whether something seemingly small, like implementing a bin system or throwing a starfish into the ocean, have a powerful ripple effect. And together, we can make a huge difference.